Welcome everybody. Uh, this presentation is Enterprise Architect for Business Analysis. My name is Scott Hebbard and I'm the Communications Manager at Spark Systems. If you want to reach out to me, contact me at shebbard at sparksystems.com. Enterprise Architect was commercially released in 2000 and covers a number of industry verticals from banking to healthcare. The agenda for today's session will include a number of animations and an Enterprise Architect 15.2 demonstration. Some of the concepts covered today are available in more detail in the EA for BA webinar series, which is available from www.sparksystems.com slash webinars. We also encourage you to download a free 30-day trial of Enterprise Architect. As you can see on screen, Enterprise Architect can be used for user stories, for wireframes, can also be used for managing requirements, building business processes, and much, much more. It also allows you to retain knowledge, so you can take specifications out of dusty drawers and store them in a central repository that's maintainable for years. It doesn't require a knowledge silo to remember decisions that were made 10 years earlier, everything's stored in the model. This essentially allows you to reuse requirements. Let's take a quick look at the Enterprise Architect user interface. At the top, there are a number of different tabs, such as Design, Layout, Simulate, Construct, and Configure. On the left of screen, we have a toolbox, providing all the tools required in order to create our diagrams. On the right of screen, we have a Properties dialog. So if we select an element, we can look at Type, Keywords, Status, and Version Numbers for any element in our model repository. The browser is used to navigate our model. And you can see I've created a simple diagram, which will allow us to have a look at some examples in EA. The first example is a requirements diagram. You can see that we have a number of requirements for tethering the shuttle and for managing payload and for controlling the robotic arm. This design of the shuttle also allows us to demonstrate traceability so we can link our requirements to use cases, to actors, to strategies and to a business process. You'll notice that there are a number of colours for these requirements. You can define status colours for each status type such as implemented, mandatory, proposed and validated. So if I bring up the properties for requirement number 7 and I change the status from proposed to validated, you'll instantly see that the colour of that requirement changes on screen. In addition to requirements, Enterprise Architect also allows you to model use cases, test cases. You can model wireframes such as these phones shown on screen and you can link those elements to requirements and a process. You can model sequence diagrams class diagrams, including or the attributes and operations for each class. Once again, you can bring up the traceability window to show how these classes are associated with use cases and business strategy. You can model a BPMN diagram. The one on screen has three swim lanes. Enterprise Architect supports DMN simulation, so decision model notation simulation. You can even model comprehensive business systems, such as this airport model shown on screen. So you can look at innovation, strategy. You can model an airport ecosystem. You can look at capability models, value streams, and much, much more. So let's look at the role of a BA and how Enterprise Architect from Spark Systems can help get things done. A BA helps businesses to solve problems by eliminating or overcoming technical and functional challenges. To do this, it is important to understand the problems, find the root cause, define them accurately, and then recommend actions to help solve these problems. This often requires the BA to liaise between business and technical teams. Job often requires the need to convert the business needs to technical requirements and then communicate them to a technical team 
will start developing technical solutions for the business problems. PAs deal with changing requirements due to changes in regulations, policies, market conditions, constraints, resources and skills. BAs collaborate with every stakeholder associated with their projects. They travel to client spaces, facilitate workshops, conduct interviews, observe processes, and elicit requirements. After requirements verification and requirements analysis and design, BAs communicate the technical requirements to technical teams who are most often located in geographically dispersed locations. Let's introduce you to Sandra. Sandra is a BA. Sandra uses Enterprise Architect for all of her business analysis activities. Let's see how a typical day looks for Sandra. At 9am, she starts the day by logging into EA. Between 9 and 9.15am, she checks the calendar. She checks her agenda and plans a day. At 9.15, she looks at her model mail or within Enterprise Architect. 9.30 to 10.15, she looks at the Gantt chart to check up on her project tasks. She adds items to her to-do list, makes appointments with stakeholders for meetings, updates the project manager with tasks to complete for the week. She prepares for the stand-up meeting. She grabs a coffee. Between 10.30 and 11, the stand-up finishes and she gets back to her desk. She notes down any issues, risks, and changes to the resources in the Kanban journal for further discussion, and she prepares for the next meeting. Between 11 and 12, there's a meeting with the SME and the UX expert to verify and discuss all of the requirements. Between 12 and 12.30, Sandra has a lunch break. Between 12.30 and 12.45, she prepares for the next meeting with the technical team on requirements, clarification and discussions. Between 12.45 and 2pm, she has a meeting with the technical team on requirements, clarification and discussion. Between 2.30 and 4.30pm, she works on her tasks for an approved requirement change. She generates an activity flow model and test cases. She performs use case testing, she records the defects in the project defects log, and she sends the necessary notifications and feedback. She also generates a test report. Between 4.30pm and 5.30pm, she has a meeting with the project manager and the delivery manager for discussing the project progress. She looks at a raid log, creates new changes and a few other issues, and records the meeting notes for future reference. Enterprise Architect provides a comprehensive set of tools for requirements management. Using this mind map, let's have a look at a few examples of how you can use requirements in Enterprise Architect. So the first two things on this checklist that I want to look at are creating requirements from a pattern and creating requirements from scratch using the toolbox. If I open the toolbox, you can see there are a number of requirements and extended requirements, and there are two patterns. There's patterns for creating functional requirements, and there's a pattern for creating non-functional requirements. You can see that this first functional requirement has a trace to a checklist. You can edit the name and the notes for any requirement, and you can modify all the properties such as the author and the status. This checklist allows you to set a number of values, such as atomic, attainable, and current, and you can modify this checklist so that it caters for your own personal needs. I can also use the toolbox to simply create a new requirement. When you create a requirement, you can edit the name, and you can see Enterprise Architect 15 allows you to automatically align requirements with ease. Most of the hard work is done for you using patterns and you can very quickly create your own checklists and using the quick linker I can connect my checklist to the new test BBC requirement that I've built. All you have to do is check the items on the checklist and you're done. I 
I've just demonstrated how to create requirements from a pattern and using the toolbox. To further simplify the process of creating requirements attributes, we can create system defined tagged values. When I select the drop down menu, you can see there are hundreds of different system defined tagged values that you can choose. For example, QA checked is a binary value that can be true or false. The next thing I'm going to look at is status colors. So from the layout menu, select appearance and configure the status colors. You can see there are different colors for approved, mandatory, implemented. To see how this works in practice, I can select a requirement such as the remove user requirement, change the status to proposed, and you'll instantly see the color changes for that particular status. One of the benefits of using Enterprise Architect is to maintain relationships and traceability. So in this next section, we're gonna look at how we manage those relationships using Enterprise Architect. The first thing to note is that you have a number of relationships in the toolbox, such as dependency, realize, trace, information flow. So you can simply create two elements on a diagram and use the toolbox to create that relationship. But there are other ways of creating relationships. So let's have a look at traceability and see how some of these work. On screen, you have a full traceability diagram. If I select requirement number 14, which is a shopping basket, I can see which elements realize and implement that particular requirement. You can see this example uses both a requirement and a use case and links that to a wireframe for a mobile phone application. This gives a great deal of traceability between strategy, requirements and use cases and the eventual system design. One of the other advantages is impact analysis. Now within Enterprise Architect, I can drag any element on screen and I can insert all related elements. I can specify the depth level, the link direction, limit it to a particular namespace, incoming and outgoing, and I can click OK and automatically create an impact diagram. Now for this particular example, it's not that detailed, so if we have a look at another impact diagram, you can see from the storeroom worker, I've gone a couple of levels deep and it's been able to show me all of the use cases and requirements and even web server components that are impacted by making a change to that particular actor. So we have a traceability view and we also have the ability to view relationships and look at the inspector. So if I go into my traceability diagram and select requirement number 14, I can use the inspector view to see all of the relationship and all of the discussions related to that particular topic. So we've had a look at uh, creating a traceability diagram, looking at impact analysis, and looking at some of the relationships between requirements. Let's take a look at Enterprise Architect for business analysis with a specific emphasis on planning. There are a number of takeaways from this process. First of all, there are three useful skills for BA planning. We're gonna look at the business analysis core concept model, Enterprise Architect's built-in modeling capabilities to capture the output of BA planning tasks, look at how to organize and maintain BA planning artifacts in Enterprise Architect, an example method to plan BA governance and stakeholder engagement approach. So the three useful skills that help in BA planning is architectural thinking, visual modeling, and understanding of project management. And Ross Architect allows you to plan resources, plan your schedule, and manage your stakeholder engagement. And as a visual modeling tool, it makes it easy to communicate. For example, here is a business analysis core concept model that you may be familiar with. Now, here is the same model that's been modeled in Enterprise Architect. It allows you to define and model your input, 
and analysis of your output tasks. Here we have a mind map that shows all of the different options for planning that are available within Enterprise Architect from functional decomposition through to a Gantt chart. On screen we have a very simple org chart that's been created using a basic pattern within Enterprise Architect. Patterns allow you to get up and running very quickly in Enterprise Architect. So you don't necessarily need to understand how to model the items. You can use a predefined pattern. You can alter images and you can add text, properties and details with relative ease. As you can see, Enterprise Architect supports interface analysis, a business glossary and stakeholder engagement. So here on screen, we have a stakeholder list. So you can very easily view things in a text-based view, which allows you to add stakeholders and to update properties such as stereotype and status. You also have a stakeholder matrix that can all be modeled within Enterprise Architect. You can define your scope. You can define requirements. You can create a business glossary. You can create a roles and permissions matrix. All of this can be done within Enterprise Architect and each of these elements can then be mapped to higher level strategies or business processes. In this technical showcase, I wanted to demonstrate some of the capabilities of Enterprise Architect for a business analyst. We looked at the EA interface and saw how it worked. We looked at the day of a life of a BA using Enterprise Architect. We looked at how to model functional and non-functional requirements. We also looked at how Enterprise Architect can be used to assist with planning. For more information on anything that I've covered today, please visit www.sparksystems.com. I also encourage you to look at our tools and techniques for the BA Body of Knowledge Guide version 3. This free online resource provides access to hundreds of examples sample diagrams with detailed notes on how to achieve a number of techniques around business analysis using Enterprise Architect. You can see sample diagrams such as one shown on screen. It's easy to navigate and is available via the Pro Cloud server and is delivered online. For example, this diagram shows how functional decomposition might work in Enterprise Architect. While I'm talking about resources, please feel free to check out our webinar library. There's hundreds of free webinars, including the Enterprise Architect for Business Analysis webinar series, which covers everything from importing requirements to business analysis planning.